chapter 15. Here we go. Continuous probability is what we're on. Every theory that I taught you so far in chapter 13, chapter 14 applies to everything. Everything I taught you. Find the mean, find the variance, find the standard deviation. You're doing the exactly same thing. What's the difference between continuous probability and discrete? Discrete you can count. Continuous you can't. An example would be time. See, everyone will have a slight little weight. You can't measure, you can't say how many, like in terms of decimal points, you can't count that. Whereas rolling a dice, you can. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's very countable. But when we talk about the weight, in this classroom, we could have, I don't know, 70.23, 70.2, 71.2. There are too many variables or too many possible answers to count. But it's easier if I said, how many of you weigh between 70 to 80? How many of you weigh between uh, 60 to 70? Then that's now classifying a region. See, region, then I can calculate. But I can't calculate for individual results. That's when you use continuous probability because it's continuous. It's a continuous variable. The example I like to use is dice. We know it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's discrete. Okay? Continuous, as I wrote here, is like using, using a 6 centimeter string. And I explained this previously as well. I said, if you had a 6 centimeter string, and I said, if you were to cut randomly, close your eyes and randomly choose a point to cut this string, right? And let's say you cut it here. If you cut it there, then I ask you, what's the chances of you cutting exactly there? What's the chances? Now it's hard to calculate because it's the one dash, the one line out of how many dashes could you actually do? You can cut infinitely anywhere. I don't know where you're going to cut. I can't say it's one out of two. It's clearly not half. I don't know what that dash is, that slash that you just made, it's one of many slashes that you could make. That's why I can't figure out the probability. But if I asked you a different question, if I said, what's the chances of you, let's say this is three centimeters, what's the chance of you cutting anywhere between zero and three? If I said, what's the chance of you cutting randomly and it hits one of these spots here? Then now you can say to me, you're like, oh, well, there's a 50-50 chance. You either get it in this region or you don't. You either do or you don't. See, now you can actually tell me 50% of it you will land in it and 50% of it you won't because that's 3 centimeters to 6, that's 50% of it. And 0 to 3 is also another 50%. So now you can work out the percentage. You can say from 0 to 3 when it's a region, then you can say, yeah, chance of you hitting within that region, I can calculate. But if I ask you to find just one section, one slash, that's impossible. Because we don't know how many slashes you can make between 0 and 6 centimeters. Unlike discrete over here, see, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it's countable. You can count there are 6 items. Okay, there's not 2.5, there's not 2.7, there's none of that. It's very discrete, it's countable. Whereas here, this is not discrete. We don't know where you could slash it. You could slash anywhere. I don't know where you could have slashed it. So how many different slashes could you do? I don't know. There'll be one out of that many. Technically, one out of infinite infinity. That's why we don't know the probability. So, having said that, what did you? What did I want you to take out of this slide? Was that I want you to understand that continuous probability. The only way to find the chances or the probability of something occurring, if it's a continuous variable, is if you find it through a region. So, region now links back to what we did in integration. It's going to be the area because area talks about an interval. That's how it links back. Okay, so. This is the theory. They're saying, so if we know it has to be a region, if you can work out the probability based on the region, then as long as you can model a situation where you can find the region. So here we say, if calculating an interval allows us to find the ability to calculate probability, then let's say I've modeled my situation. Okay, I've modeled my situation. This is my f of x. If I asked you to find the region, 0 to 4. If I can model my probability, chances of something occurring is modeled by the area. Okay, so the probability is the area. The chances of something occurring. If I can model it according to this, that allows me to find out now x variables being continuous. Meaning, if I measured someone's weight in this class and it was linear. So people who were 4 years old, you weigh, I don't know, half a kilo, right? I'm just making all this up. So no. let's say, four, and I was able to measure it. The chance is 100%. If you were two kilos, it was, I mean, uh, age of two, you were definitely a quarter of a kilo, right? 
if I somehow could model that, that this line described the variable weight, okay, if I could say that, then the probability is the chance of the area underneath it. So this is 100%, 50% of you would weigh you know, a quarter of a kilo and then a quarter of a percent of you would weigh a certain amount. That's what I can do, right? Now, this is the theory. If let's say you can model it through a graph and the area represents the probability, then the one thing we know about probability that we've learnt from the very beginning, probability of any variable is between 0 to 1. True? Because it's 0 to 1, then theoretically, according to what I just said, as long as the area under the curve of any curve that I can model, as long as this is 0 and to a maximum of 1, I can say the area is the chance. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so the area can be the chance. But it has to fit one thing. Probability, the description of probability still stays the same. See, probability is always between 0 and 1, so it's positive, And it has a maximum of 1. So what you're learning in the first exercise is you can model any curve. It doesn't matter what curve it is. It could be any curve you want as long as all probabilities add up to 1 and the probabilities can't be negative. If you can draw a graph, any curve that you want, so I can do this. I can model it like this and I say this represents a situation. This measures time. Okay, measures time. Time is a, a, a continuous variable as long as the area under the curve is equal to 1. They all add up to 1. The area, total area has to equal to 1. And clearly it's not negative because you can't have negative probability. See, if you're using this to model it, it has to have the properties of probability, which is greater than 1 and it's not negative. Does that make sense? Okay, so all we're just saying is we're just saying if we can model a situation with a curve, which we call f of x, then the area underneath it, I'll just do this. The area underneath that curve, if it equals to 1, we can now say the area is the probability, the chances of it occurring. Just like how I did with a string, I said 0 to 6 centimeters. I modeled it with a straight equation and I said, what's the chances of you cutting anywhere between 0 and 3? See, the chances was 50, 50% 50 out of your total area, which is 100%. See what I'm doing there? I'm just saying, this is 100% area. What's the chances? That region there is half of the total region. It's like saying red out of blue. So my red region out of my total blue region, that's my percentage, which is why I know it's half. It's 50%. So what I'm really saying is integration from 0 to 3 of f of x out of integration from 0 to 6 of f of x, that's my probability. That's my chance. I can find it. So that area now talks about probability. But the only way for area to be probability is it fits these two points. It has to all add up to 1 and it has to not be negative. Okay, that's the logic. That's the logic of what we're trying to say. Now there's a name for this, which is what you need to understand, and you'll know straight away in the exam whether this is a continuous probability or discrete. Very simple. Okay. I'll just clear out all this. Whoops. Everything I just said was sort of in plain English. The way they describe it, they call it the probability density function. Okay, and the two conditions that they're writing there is exactly what I'm trying to describe up here. They're just trying to say for any function of f however you model it, if it satisfied the following two properties. What are these two properties? They're just saying if you found the curve f of x is greater than or equal to zero. What does that mean? That just means as long as the curve is above the x-axis. Because it makes sense. You can't have a curve below the x-axis because that means you've got negative probability. You can't have negative probability in this case. So that's why that satisfies my condition up here. Second one says if you found the area under that curve, if it's equal to 1, if the sum of all the areas total equal to 1, that's good because your probability can only range from 0 to 1. That's why these are your two conditions and if it's a PDF function, which we mean probability density function, it just means this graph 
can model a probability situation. That's all you need to know. That's the first step. You can't do continuous probability until this is satisfied. You can't model a situation until it makes sense. So this is what it's saying. You can't model a continuous uh, a variable until it makes sense. All probabilities add up to one, and all probabilities are positive. You can't have negative graph. Okay. So that's your first part of the exercise. You need just needed to understand continuous variable. The only way to find it is finding area it's between the region. Because it's under region, we know that integration gives you the area, which means it's region. But area can have negative area. Area can be greater than one. That's a problem. Because if we're going to model a probability situation, if we're going to try to pretend that we can model a situation using equations, then it has to make sense. It has to fit in the idea of what probability is. And we know probability starts from zero to one. That's why there's this condition. Okay, so when it fits this condition, we call it a PDF function, probability density function. Those are the only two properties, and it makes sense for continuous variable. Yeah? Now, in your exercise, uh, in your textbook, this is what they say. They say, we say that f is a probability density function if probability of a to b, which is the interval, if you add all the areas together, it's integration of a to b, and it fits these two. Okay, so this is your curve, and it could be any curve you want. It doesn't have to be there. It could have been an exponential curve. It doesn't matter. As long as the area between some interval equals to 1 and it's above the x-axis, you now have a model. Now you have a PDF function. If you have a PDF function, you can work out the probabilities based on area. Okay, so the area equals probability. But area doesn't equal probability if it doesn't fit these two properties. Okay? Let's do an example. They say here, consider the exponential probability density function. So they already told you, in your exam, this is what I mean, if you see probability density function, the first thing that should occur to you is look at that question, you should know continuous problem. It's continu continuous and not discrete. That's the first thing you should be looking for. If they ask PDF function or if they tell you it's a PDF function, you should already starting off with it's a continuous variable, chapter 15, 16, or 17. Okay. So, now that you know it's a uh, probability density function, that means it tells you that the area has to add up to 1. All they're asking you to do in this question here is to prove that. To prove that this equation, this hybrid equation, actually models a probability situation. So, first one says sketch the graph of f, right? So we can see, alright, I'm going to sketch the graph of f, I'm going to say, alright, here we go. Did I actually do, oh, I did do it, okay. I'm going to do it on this side anyway. We've got when x is greater than 0, so this is my x values, when it's greater than 0, I have 2 times e negative 2x. Now that's an exponential graph, but decaying. Okay, it's got negative, negative of x, which means reflection in your y-axis, so it drops down. So it's technically meant to look like this. But because it said x is greater than 0, x is greater than 0, I only sketch this part of the graph. And x is 0 and less. Okay, so I only sketched this part, but it said x greater than zero. That's why it's an open circle here. Okay, what's that value? That's when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, you should have two. So I know this has to be one intercept of two. Okay, so from two down, and then anything less than or equal to zero, when x is less than or equal to zero, I should have zero. And that's my graph so far. That's my hybrid graph. Okay, I've got an exponential with an asymptote and y equals zero. This is my graph. Now the only way for this to be a probability density function, which is what they're saying here, show that f is a probability density function, is if it's two criteria. Is the graph above the x-axis? Yes. Yes it is. That means the area under the curve is positive. Second condition is, does the area add up to one? Because the probability has to all add up to one. Because probability is now area, right? So we want to model that. We need to find that the area under the curve does the area, actually I'll just do question mark area equal to 1. That's what I want to know. Okay, I want to know does the area equal to 1 because if it does, this curve, this hybrid function models a probability situation. Okay, otherwise it doesn't. Then you can't find the probability. Yeah? So, how do you prove it? Show that f is a probability density function where you know the first condition is true. f of x is greater than zero. Okay, this is f of x, and we know f of x 
is greater than zero. That's true. What we don't know is, is the integration from negative infinity to infinity of f of x, does that equal to one? That's what we want to find out. So let's work it out. Integration, it's not negative infinity anymore because negative infinity, we know it's negative infinity up to this point, it's all zero. So from zero to positive infinity is what we're looking for. Zero to positive infinity of 2e negative 2x dx. We want to know if this equals one. Oh. Find the integration here. So using what you've learned so far, take out two, zero, infinity, e negative 2x dx. Integration of e negative 2x, what is that equal to? Good. e negative 2x, zero to infinity. Okay. So you can see here, I'm just doing one on k. So if that's your k value, it's one over k. So one on negative two e negative 2x now you're doing your definite integrals sub it in so it's 2 times sub infinity in so negative half times e to the power of negative infinity take away sub 0 in so negative half e to the power of 0 let's work it out what's e to the power of negative infinity <coughs> if you think about it let's say 2 to the power of infinity oh. Technically, this is the same thing as writing negative 1 over 2e to the power of infinity. What is that value going to come to? Zero. Because if you think about it, e to the power of infinity is going to get really large. But 1 divided by a very large number is going to be very, very small. It's like saying 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. 1 divided by 4 is 0.25. It's getting smaller. 1 divided by 8, I don't know what that is, but it's getting smaller. Yeah. It's, I think it's 0 0.125. If you keep dividing by a very, very large number, this number <laughs> overall is very small. So we can say that approach is zero. Here, e to the power zero we know is one. One times negative half, two negatives make a positive. So right now I have a half times two on the outside equals one. So it's true. This is a PDF function because the graph is above the zero. So function is above the x-axis. And the area underneath it right now adds up to 1. So the sum of all the probabilities, or sum of all the areas, equals the 1. Now I can say, yeah, I can use this to call it a probability. But if that didn't fit, you can't say that. You can't say, oh, the area under the curve is the probability. Until these two conditions are met, then you can say, yeah, that curve now can satisfy a probability situation and therefore the area under the curve which is a region can now be represented as my probability but up until you can prove these two points it is not possible to find the probability of a continuous variable okay and there you go and then now it says find probability of x greater than one whether a random variable x has probability density function all they're really saying is if this is now your probability this represents your x values they're just saying, if this is your x values, find the area greater than 1. So what does that mean? It just means find the area under the curve. Find the area under the curve between 1 to infinity of f of x dx. The only thing that changes is here would be 1. So the area under the curve would be negative half of e, which becomes e, if we think about it. Instead of e to the power of 0, It'll be e to the power of 1. So this final answer would be e. Okay? So I'll let that sink. We're going to talk about that uh, when you come back after your sacks. But that's why I want you to think about your continuous versus discrete. What's the difference between the two? And the main thing is region. One requires region, one doesn't require region. Okay? And that's, that's where the theory is coming from for continuous. So to find the continuous probability, you have to find the region region is area okay and there you go then after you understand that then you've got I've just done all those solutions there I'll post that up but this is a typical example oh, that was 2015 went, went too long ago have a look at this see if you understand this question simple and easy you can use a calculator 2015 and we'll finish it off and we'll wrap it up the key part remember I said in the exams if you see probability density function think of continuous straight away 
If it's continuous or if it's a property density function, it satisfies two equipment things already. F of x is above the x-axis, and the sum of all the areas will be equal to 1. So, they tell you this is the graph. You can type that in your calculator if you want to. You can sketch it if you want. Visualize it. A to the x, and that's A E. And it's a straight line. Yeah? The value of A is. You've got two criteria there. Sketch it however you want, but you can solve this. Okay, I'm going to give you, what time is it anyway? 51, all right, cool. I'll give you two minutes to have a think, and I'll tell you the answer. Okay, have a think. You get a calculator too. Visualize the problem. And use what I just taught you about probability density function. Draw a graph first. 0 to 1, 0, 1 to 2. Visualize what you have. You got a e to the power of x between 0 and 1. And you got a times e. e is the Euler's number. 1 to 2. Otherwise, it's 0. So if you visualize this, then you question yourself, well, what do I have? What do I know? And how do I solve? Probably helps to sketch it. Typed in your calculator, otherwise if you just estimated, see I just estimated the graph, this is what it looks like. Still haven't answered the question, but this is the first step, visualize the problem. From 0 to 1 it's an exponential graph, from 1 to 2 it's a linear equation. A times E, whatever Euler's number is, is a constant. If it's constant then it's just a straight horizontal line. I subbed in the intervals, 0 and 1 into the equation, and I got sub 0 in, you get A. So when x is 0, you got y value is A. Sub in 1, add 1, y value of AE. This graph has a constant of AE. Question is, so what if you got the graph? How do you solve for A? Because clearly it satisfies, it's a probability density function, it satisfies the first criteria. It's above the x-axis, yes. Does it satisfy the second one? And it should. It says probability density function, so it has to satisfy the second condition. So all you had to do in your calculator, which is one step, was it's from 0 to 2 of your f of x, which is a e to the power of x, plus, which is the area under this curve, 0 to 1, plus a e dx Solve for A. That's all you have to do. Type in your calculus. You know the sum of the area under the curve, if it's a probability density function, it has to satisfy two conditions. Condition one, it's above the x-axis. Yes, it is. Condition two, the sum from negative infinity to infinity of f of x, so basically the area under the curve, has to equal to one. Then it's called a probability density function. Because it said it's a PDF function, then 
you know this has to all equal to 1. Type that in your calculator. Integration from 0 to 2 of your function has to equal to 1. Voila. Solve, because x you can substitute the intervals and you got a's and you got an equation. It's possible to solve. Type in your calculator and bam. I think I've done it. Did I do it? No. I didn't do it in the calculator. Oh well, it's there. Error on the curve. You can do that by hand if you wanted to. Okay. 2015. 63% of them got it correct. So it's not too bad. It's pretty good. But there you go. You can spit that up and find the interval and whatnot. But that's essentially the theory or the concept that I wanted to teach. Chapter 15, exercise 15a, PDF function. What does it mean? That's what it means. Two criteria. That's what you have to learn. Okay? On that, please pack up and I don't believe in luck, so good skill for tomorrow. Okay? Not good luck. Good skill.